Dan Ernest. Where are you coming to us from today? From Manhattan, where I've lived for the last 10 or so years. Do you remember the first time playing the music? When we were in school together, I remember your tune called Protest. I think it was a composer's concert. The thing I remember most about Protest was that it actually represented something and it had a lot of, like, like not necessarily standard effects in it. I remember it being make me feel like you're actually creating sounds instead of imitating them. You are the lead trumpet player. Typically, the lead trumpet player sets the tone for the interpretation of the ensemble parts. A lot of the non-standard things that pop out to me are a lot of the half-step voicings that you put in between trumpet one and trumpet two. We have Seneca Black, who also has is a great lead trumpet player, so we almost can have two people that have that similar leadership experience to really crunch those really dissonant voicings. Do you ever feel like you and Seneca have, have trouble sometimes agreeing on phrasing or articulation? You know, I don't feel any sort of like struggle. We get along great, but in rehearsal, we don't have to talk very much because it's cool. <laughs> Some of the tunes I feel like are more rhythm section driven. And I feel like my role, instead of being like lead trumpet, it's more of like a accompaniment role. I think it's kind of, fun in that regard and very different from like a big band playing more traditional music maybe. But I always wonder if you ever feel like you're in a tighter box as far as your ability to stretch interpretations. It doesn't make me uncomfortable if things are strict or things are loose and if anything it's it's much less restrictive than more traditional settings because a lot of times the lead trumpet parts you know they'll be the note, the articulation and the, dy the dynamic where in your music they'll be like, all right, here's a four bar open section. Let's build up and down and watch me for dynamics. That's pretty loose. <laughs> <laughs> you up top and Josh, the bass player at the bottom, the, the chaos still is sort of grounded by these endpoints. That's a role that I'm really comfortable playing. And as a lead trumpet player, that's kind of our traditional role. The way that you like express yourself is through the interpretation of other people's phrases. Favorite track or a favorite uh, moment on the record? You always have a ballad, a soft tune. Every record has this like sort of denouement. It's kind of like the darker lyrical side. It's so important to me to, to show this orchestra as A, an orchestra, B, a chamber music ensemble, and C, a band that can play beautifully. Yeah. Like, I remember when we finally got Looks of Rumque, and it was like, yeah, okay, that was it. And that was a really satisfying feeling, like, getting that on tape. Sometimes on the gigs, it's especially challenging, because it's usually, like, right after a really uh, hard-hitting, snappy, toe-tapping number. So that can, you can still kind of get a little bit of the... You try and play a note, and, like, you get, like... <laughs> come out. Musically, the moments are really powerful when you show that juxtaposition. Like, if everything's loud, nothing is loud. We really need the softs to, like, make the louds have more impact. Do you have any reflections on this album as a protest record? It's just been amazing to see what's been happening in the world. It's hard to, to even go there. Remembering the whole symphony coming together. Every performance, we'd have, like, another movement. The thing I really like about it is that it's music that's reflecting what's happening in history. It's easy to fall into the trap of just imitating what's already come before. I think it gives the teeth back into the whole art of music when it actually represents what's going on. Because your music is trying to represent and reflect uh, different things in the human experience then it's worth something. But is there anything else that you would want people to know? I guess I've, I've always really liked the fact that you're not afraid to write stuff that's that's hard or what other people would would tell you is not possible i remember a couple of text threads between the two of us when you're like writing something and like hey can i do this and i'm like just write it if it works it works but like push the envelope i do feel like that's something that you have to earn the right to do and you need to earn that level of commitment from the musicians there's plenty of times to shine in your music but i feel like a really great lead player doesn't necessarily need the spotlight all the time. There is such a, a sensitivity to the purpose of the moment in your playing. Oh, thanks, man. You have to know and listen around to try and make sure that as brass players, we're not just dominating everything. If we can hear the saxophones, it's because we have permission from the brass. <laughs> permission, that's it. A recent or upcoming project? Usually I'm, I stay busy playing Broadway shows, but uh, that's dark right now. Teaching at the UN school, 
I also love cycling. You might see me crossing the GW Bridge on a bicycle. There is a bike path there. I won't be on the road. I have to question your courage. <laughs> I miss the whole hang, man. I miss you, man, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye. Bye.